Welcome to the very first episode of OU Insider's Field Vision with Coach Clinton. I'm your host and OU Insider contributor, Brian Clinton, and I am ecstatic about bringing you this new series. We're going to try and help Sooner fans get more familiar with the upcoming opponent each and every week and, and try and give you a little bit of inside information on what the uh, uh, Sooner's opponent are going to try and do each and every week. Uh when they come to Norman or when Oklahoma hits the road. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do a little bit of film breakdown. Uh, we're going to try and highlight some tendencies, some personnel groupings, key plays and players, things of that nature, anything that, that might help you uh, be better prepared uh, to watch a game each and every week. And in week four, we're kicking things off. First game of Big 12 play for the Sooners against Cincinnati. If you are on OU Insider, uh, every week I do a scouting report on the Sooners' uh, upcoming opponent. That's what I'm referencing here. Uh, and so I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown on Cincinnati. They are 2-1. and one. They just came off a heartbreaking loss uh, to Miami, Ohio. 31-24 is the final in overtime there. And this was, this was a tough one uh, because it, it's not just – a bad loss, but it's also a, a rivalry game. This this was the first loss in 17 uh, meetings for, for Cincinnati. They'd beaten Miami 16 straight times. And so uh, it's a tough one. It's a tough one for the Bearcats. Uh, could they have been looking forward at, uh, to Oklahoma a little bit, potentially? Uh, and we'll talk about that here in just a bit. But uh, first-year head coach Scott Satterfield comes over from Louisville and, uh, you know, lots of questions as to why he was the guy uh, that got hired there. But he's there. He's got him at two and one. His offensive coordinator is Brad Glenn. Uh, you're going to see uh, pistol formation a lot out of these guys uh, on offense. And then defensively, they're multiple. We see some three, three, five. We see some three, four looks. Um, but the, these guys, uh, they do try to get after the quarterback. Uh, and, and do a good job. They have a really good defensive line. Uh, Dante Corleone's potentially the best defensive lineman in the Big 12 uh, and one of the best in the country. So going to be a, a challenge for the Sooners interior defensive line for sure. Um, and something else we're going to do on this show is try and help you guys with some terminology as well. And so uh, first of all, let's talk, what, what does pistol mean? So, uh, your traditional under center quarterback, obviously he is under, he's under, he takes the snap from underneath the center in shotgun. Uh, traditionally you see a quarterback at about seven yards deep pistol is going to see the quarterback about four yards behind the center. And so uh, you have, you have room for a running back to be directly behind the quarterback as if he would be in, in power eye formation but you also have uh, room to to have offset. You have uh, you can have split backfield. Uh, you can have uh, single back. You can have uh, H backs and tight ends in the backfield. Uh, it really gives offenses uh, the ability to pack a lot of uh, of blockers and a lot of guys into the box uh, to help with the running game. And it really helps when you have a guy that's as as mobile as Emory Jones is. So. Uh, when, when you hear pistol, that's what it means. And we're going to see a lot of that. Um, I've also done, uh, s some pretty extensive research on, on the Bearcats this week, just to get prepared. And, uh, I looked at, uh, their personnel groupings. I looked at 77 plays total. Uh, that was pretty much what I could pull from the broadcast. And from what I saw, uh, 44 plays were 11 personnel, 24 plays were 12 personnel, and six plays were 10 personnel. They had one uh, of 13 personnel and, and one of 22 personnel. So what, is, what does 11 personnel mean? There's two numbers that you obviously uh, need to pay attention to. Uh, the first number whenever we're giving personnel groupings is the number of running backs in, in, the, in the formation. And the second number is the number of tight ends in the formation. So 11 personnel would be one running back, one tight end. 12 personnel would be one running back, two tight ends. Um, two, uh, 22 personnel, 
two running backs, two tight ends. Uh, not very common that one, but you get the gist of it. That's, that's what we're talking about. So uh, they had one running back and one tight end on the field 57% of the time. Uh, 31% of the time it was one running back, two tight ends. So um, you're going to see them try and use a lot of, of motion, a lot of eye candy before the snap to get uh, get the Sooners defense uh, second guessing its responsibilities. Uh, they, they do a lot of this and it's it's been fairly effective against uh, some of the teams that they've played to this point. So um, Oklahoma's going to have to have really disciplined eyes defensively. And uh, I think obviously that'll be something that they're really hammering home in practice this week. Um, defensively, as I said, they're multiple. Um, the defensive line is really the the group to look for, the group to watch on this team. Uh, Deshaun Pace, who plays their star position, it's essentially it's a nickel, uh, just kind of like you have the cheetah with 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 Brent Venables' defense. Uh, that's a very similar if not the exact same position that Deshaun Pace plays for the Bearcats. Uh, his brother, Ivan Pace, is is now with the Minnesota Vikings. This is a good uh, good athlete and somebody that's going to make a uh, be a big player for them this season. So uh, watch that guy. And then Jawan Briggs, who is, is their star edge player, he's a stud as well. So uh, definitely stepping it up as far as, as talent across the field from Oklahoma. But... Uh, as we kind of dive into the the film breakdown part of this, I've got I've got six plays we're going to look at, five offensive plays, uh, one defensive play, and then I've got a bonus at the end. So we'll call it seven plays, um, and the seventh one we'll just talk about because it's a special teams play. Uh, but the first one we're going to look at is a pass play. the The Bearcats are down seven nothing. They gave up a. a 79 yard touchdown on the very first play. Uh, not a, not a good way to start, but, uh, they get the ball second and seven, uh, 14 minutes, 13 seconds left in the first quarter. Uh, they're on the left hash minus 32 yard line. Uh, and they've got 11 personnel out on the field. They run this interesting play concept, uh, that is very effective. They have the slot run this shallow crossing route, and it pulls the eyes of the linebackers, uh, pulls them down. And what it does is it opens this uh, tight end up on a, on a dig, and uh, Jones hits him, uh, number 88, Peyton Singletary. Uh, they go down and drive and, and score off of this play. But um, what you have to see here is that, that that crossing route is what occupies the linebackers, and so you're going to see some spacing like that uh, against the Sooners this week as well. Uh, the second play we're going to look at uh, is three minutes left in the in the three minutes and eight seconds left in the first quarter. Uh, Cincinnati is on the right hash plus thirty yard line, and, and when I say plus thirty or minus thirty, plus thirty means you are in your opponent's territory. Minus territory is is you're on the wrong side of the fifty uh, if you're holding the ball. So uh, they are in plus territory on this one. Second and ten, we've got twelve personnel and. Um, uh, we, we see one of their bread and butter plays. Uh, this is, this is outside zone, um, w- with, uh, with the H back leading and you see Ryan Montgomery who had a really good day for them. Uh, he's their number two tailback. Uh, he busts one open after this, after this big, uh, block from their, from their lead back, uh, lead blocker. Uh, and he goes for, for 18 on the play. And so you're going to see them run this this strong side zone um, pretty often, and uh, it's going to be something that, that Oklahoma really has to, to again stay disciplined with. Um, and you know, just for for you guys that are looking at at plays like this for the first time, when you have a zone play, all of your offensive linemen move in symmetry on a zone play, so they're all moving in one direction. Um, it, it looks very fluid. Uh, it's clean. It, it just look. It looks. It's beautiful if you're if you have a football mind. It's just. It's. It's a really, really. Uh, it's a beautiful play. Uh, whereas if you're if you have a gap scheme style run, you're going to have somebody from uh, somebody pulling to play side uh, for for a block or a swab or a kick or you know whatever you're having that offensive lineman or tight end do. 
um, you're going to have somebody pulling opposite direction of everybody else uh, blocking down. So it's easy. It's easier to see or to diagnose a play whenever you look at it. If everybody's moving in the same direction, it's a run play. It's most likely uh, some sort of zone or or maybe veer. Let's look at the the third play here. Uh, Cincinnati is up ten to seven in this play, uh, and and this is the one defensive play of the game that we're going to look at. And really, the the reason I bring this one into focus you can't really see what's going on uh in the play on the back end you can tell that you've got man up on the top of the screen you can tell uh that, that your backers are playing some some zone uh whenever the whenever the play breaks down but what i want you to notice is is how they're showing pressure with this top linebacker right outside of number four the defensive end who ends up getting the sack and what it does is he backs off on the snap and it it clearly it confuses the right tackle and the running back who are in pass pro, and he he just comes free and gets a free hit on the quarterback. Uh, really good play from number four there. But really, what it comes down to is is this was just confusion on Miami Ohio's offensive line and uh, in their pass protection. So uh, they're going to try and and bring some different blitzes throughout the day against the Sooners, and that's one that you're going to see uh, definitely uh, definitely use at some point. So um, just be keeping an eye on that if you're a Sooner fan. Remember that play. The next play is 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 a run play. This is uh, 10-23 left in the third quarter. They are in plus territory on the 45-yard line left hash. It is third and one. They are in 11 personnel in this one. This was the probably my favorite play uh, of the night for them. And it all has to, it has to do with the block uh, that you see for number 45 here. So uh, Cincinnati comes, comes up and uh, they have a tight end off uh, offset that pulls from strong side uh, to backside for, for this play. He, he fills in the a gap, hits the linebacker squarely. It's a gorgeous block. And he, this is a big play. Another good, another good run. Uh, and this is where I, I want to stop and say Cincinnati is one of those teams that is going to run the football and do it effectively. Um, they average 239 yards a game on the ground as of right now. So that ranks eighth nationally, and they're going to really try and, and get things going. So uh, be, be looking for that. That's another one to, to, to watch. The fifth play I want to look at, uh, we've got a minute and 50 left in the third quarter, minus 35-yard line, balls at the center field. And as uh, first and ten, they've got ten personnel in there. They've got a single back, uh, and uh, they have hitches on this play. And Jones finds Xavier Henderson for a fifteen-yard gain on the sideline. That's going to be a trend. That's a trend that you're going to see uh, in this game. Uh, Cincinnati really likes to get the ball to number eight whenever they can. Uh, he had a huge game in this one. Just just to put it out there, he had twelve receptions for 140 yards. He averaged eleven point seven a catch. They only had eighteen total receptions in the night. So 12 of 18 catches on this guy. Do you remember Xavier Hutchinson, you, that name uh, from Iowa State last year and the year before? Uh, they just get in the ball. It's the same concept here. So uh, you'll be looking at uh, you'll be looking at, at Hutchinson or at, at Henderson getting the ball a lot. Um, and Oklahoma's going to have to be prepared to, to cover him in the intermediate passing game because he's going to be getting a lot of looks. Uh, final offensive play we're going to look at. There's 14 minutes left in the in the fourth quarter, and Henry Jones is going to have a uh, designed quarterback run here. It's a delayed draw, and he ends up taking this on on third and seven, uh, in on the opposing or on the opponent's 17 yard line, and he takes it all the way in 17 yard touchdown. This this play just shows what he's capable of as a runner, and He's calling to try and do it against the Sooners uh, on Saturday. He had 20 carries for 101 yards and a touchdown this game. And he he was 18 of 34 with two interceptions and no scores for the air. So if you wonder what Oklahoma's going to try and do, how they're going to try and force him to win this football game, that's how they're going to try and do it. They're going to try and force him to do it with his arm and not with his leg. And so don't be surprised if, if you've got a guy that's almost always responsible for him in the running game and or 
uh, if things break down in the passing game. Uh, and the final play we're going to talk about uh, this one, I don't, I don't believe will be up, but I just, I'll give you the situation and then I'll tell you what it was. It is there's 3:32 left in the fourth quarter, you're in minus 25, you're on the right hash, and it's fourth and nine. Cincinnati has the ball and it's tied 24-24. We expect a punt, right? Uh, it was it, they did have punt personnel out there, but it was a fake punt. <laughs> deep in their own territory, and it was on fourth and nine. And they, they pick it up. Uh, they end up getting down the field, uh, setting up for a game-winning field goal and, and get a block. But um, this just shows you that Scott Snatterfield is trying to do what he needs to do and try and win a game. So um, don't be surprised if you if you see him going forward on fourth down. Uh, and and it, it would not surprise me whatsoever if we see a, a fake punt in this one, Oklahoma is obviously going to be looking at it. I'm sure the the staff has looked at this over and over again already. So um, those are some tendencies that they've got. Uh, you know, just just go over some quick keys of this game. Uh, keys for for Oklahoma is is penalties. Both of these teams have been ravaged by penalties. Cincinnati's tied for 108th nationally with 24 penalties, uh, and they've lost almost 75 yards a game. Oklahoma's not much better. As of right now, they they've been pretty pretty torn up with penalties. Uh, the other thing, Emory Jones is a has has a propensity for putting the ball in harm's way. So uh, ball security, the Sooners need to keep Dylan Gabriel clean. If they can do that, if they can keep his jersey clean, uh, Oklahoma should should be fine in this game. Uh, Cincinnati struggles downfield uh, fasting. They gave up over 100 yards after catch and, and I believe almost 19 yards per reception in this game. So uh, just just get the, get the get the downfield passing game going. Uh, try and get the run game established. It might be a little more difficult against the front, but I do think Dylan Gabriel is going to have his opportunities in the passing game, uh, and this should be a really good test for Oklahoma on the road. So let us know what you think about the new uh, about the new series. We're really excited to bring this to you over at OU Insider. I'm excited to do this just because I love talking ball. Um, you know, hopefully, this is something that we can do live at some point um, and uh, you know, get you guys get you guys on and, and help me, uh, you know, have me answer questions and things of that nature. So uh, make sure you can go check us out over at OU Insider. We've got all the good stuff for you. Anything you need to know about Oklahoma football. Uh, basketball, softball, baseball. We've got it over there, uh, and we'd love doing it uh, for you guys. So just go check us out, uh, and we will see you next week. We will be back to preview the Iowa State Cyclones uh, who are set to come to town and play, play Oklahoma in Week 5. Uh, but until then, you guys take care, and we will talk to you next time uh, next week. Thank you.